Now that we know our five types of our leukocytes, let's discuss how they are made. So we're gonna go back to this big chart, only now we're gonna be on this side of the chart. So depending on what's going on in the body, here, how do we know how many and which kind? So our macrophages and our T lymphocytes These are activated by encountering a pathogen. So they contact something that's not supposed to be there. They release some chemicals, something called CSF. This is not cerebrospinal fluid. Here, this is called colony stimulating factor is what this CSF is called. This is a hormone and there are at least five different types of it in order to increase a specific type of the white blood cell that's needed. So again, five of those. So if you kind of look here, when we get in our leukopoiesis, GMCSF, GCSF, MCSF, there's a lot of different kinds um, that are going to blast off from these. Anyway, that's, that CSF goes to the red bone marrow, which is what we just showed. And it's going to do its job to increase the white blood cell that was asked for. All right. So let's draw our own version of this chart as it relates to white blood cells. So production is called the leuco, meaning white, hoesis, formation, or production. So again, that's the big chart. All right, so once again, we have our hemocytoblast. That would be our common stem cell. I know we've written this several times, but we're gonna do it again. Helps you remember. So you can have our granulocytes, granulocytes, and monocytes. This is four out of the five types right there. Or it can become an immature lymphocyte. So lymphocytes come from a completely different, they're, they have a different process. So immature means they have not acquired specificity. More on that when we talk about the immune system. Okay, so where they go to get this specificity or where they go to mature, if they go to the thymus, they're called T lymphocytes. If they stay in the bone marrow for it to happen, they are called B lymphocytes. So here, let's look at this again. So hemocytoblast, we can have the progenitor there, or we can have the lymphoid. So let's kind of skip on down with all these. So here's all your granulocytes. Here's your monocyte. B and T lymphocytes, we'll talk about natural killer cells later in the immune system. All right, 
Now, our different types of white blood cells have different lifespans. So our red blood cells live about 100 to 120 days, so three to four months. Um, it depends on what we're talking about. So our monocytes, they generally live several months. So they're around a while. Our lymphocytes, it depends on whether they're B or T. They could last several days or they could last the rest of your life. That's kind of cool, right? Our granulocytes, these poor little guys and gals, they only last between a half a day, 12 hours to nine days. And that is because these are the ones that are on the front lines. So here we're talking about they're attacking specific pathogens. So how about we say they die in battle? So we're constantly getting reinforcements.